five o'clock. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, Gail Curtis has been a colleague of mine for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> we worked together at the VA uh, Medical Center at the VA Research and Development Center uh, many years ago. Um, and, um, um, you know, I forgot the text for the bio, so I'm just going to introduce Gail, and he's going to do his own bio, okay? He knows more about himself than, than I do. So, Gail, I, I hope it won't be too painful. So, good to see good to see you all here. I, I was here. I was I stopped in last when was it last Thursday. It was actually great to see the the, the little project intros and to see some of you here. But so my short bio is, I came out of the graduate product design program here in mechanical engineering many years ago, and um, when I graduated, I was sort I was sort of lucky. My emphasis was, I was looking at more like uh, expressive tools, you know, so no, nothing, you know, in the machine shop, you know, doing uh, complex ga gadgetry. I was looking for things that would let artists work better. And uh, I was lucky enough to get uh, a job at the, at the rehab R&D center over at the VA. And, uh, that was headed up at that time by Larry Leifer, who's in the faculty here in mechanical engineering. And uh, that's what Dave was working there. And I was working on, very, I was doing videos and working on various projects until I went off to work on web design. So my background is more on human computer interaction, user experience design. My last full time job was at Yahoo, where I was, uh, that's what they call user experience designer. And I am trying to be retired now, but I'm due, uh, you know, volunteer projects involving publications, design, signage, and, you know, other. Actually, I have an app on the, on the web, uh, on the app store. It only, we had six views last week. I saw the, <laughs> but it was actually, it was actually a tool for dissolving images together. And if, if anyone has an inclination to that, Imagio is the name of it, and uh, after Italian for montaggio, kind of related to that. It's like editing. So I am here this time to talk about, like one of the core ideas that, that was in the product design program here was this idea of need finding. And, you know, nobody was, was heard this thing or was talking, it was like a new idea. And what, what I realized is that the, the program there was, it was like, a, it wasn't about design, it was sort of like, it was sort of like a school for inventors. Because the whole idea of need finding is understanding the problem better. And, uh, as a, and you know, as a complement to having new materials or tools to develop a good solution. And, um, so it turns out that there was this guy, how many are familiar with this, at least the name, Abraham Maslow and his Pyramid of Need, right? So a few of you are familiar with that. So he was a psychologist that worked, you know, mostly in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And, you know, he developed a counter model to what motivates and drives people to the it's a sort of Freudian thing where people are driven by their the dark their dark side and their dark forces. He was sort of looking at well there are there are actually positive forces that kind of motivate and, and drive people. And um, so I'm I decided well, I wanted to list this time to you know talk a little bit about needs. Because what, what what happens is, you know, sometimes as they say so now, okay, all premises. I'm going to say many things that will contradict exactly what Dave said. But, you know, it's just a point of view. He has a point of view. I have a point of view. And, you know, all you have to make a choice what point of view you're going to take on doing the problem. Of course, Dave is giving you the grade, but, you know, he said that he's on your side, right? So, anyway, so here, you know, we think, does somebody really need that? Do you really need that thing? Does Verdana really need to 
you know, have, have a different way to plug in her, charge her wheelchair. You know, it, it, there's sort of this kind of negative thing that do you, do you really need it or you just want it? So the big thing about the idea of need finding was that for, as for designers, it's not our job and it doesn't help to try to make that judgment about whether this person really needs that or do they just want it. You know, it's more kind of understanding that there's an opportunity there. There are other people who have that job, right? Psychologists and therapists and counselors. As designers, that's not our job. You know, we're looking for what's going to help, uh, help people kind of like realize themselves. So that's what's interesting about seeing the, this pyramid here. He started off with the idea that at the, at the base of the pyramid are physiological needs. You know, food, shelter, clothing, all that kind of reproduction there. Then, we have, then once we kind of have those settled, then we're focusing on safety. Once we sort of have those settled, then we focus on love and belonging and, and community and what else is this family, sense of being connected. Once we sort of have, feel good about those, then we're thinking about our self-esteem. And what does he say here? Recognition, strength, freedom. And at the top of the pyramid, he has self-actualization which is sort of this kind of be all you can be. Now, it's the, the Army, U.S. Army has adopted that as its catchphrase, right? Be all you can be. But really, you know, just reflect upon yourself that somewhere in, somewhere in each one of us, there's a little spark of energy that's driving us. Or when, when we have the opportunity to, you know, do something in peace, wow, this is really what I should be doing. This is really who I am. And we realize that we can do that. And that that, that motivation, there's, there's a pull that's drawing everybody up that pyramid. And these other things are there, you know, they kind of need to get managed. M maybe satisfied, maybe deflected or whatever. But, you know, this is our, this is our life. We're driven by these high level impulses, needs, aspirations. And we're managing the things that, that need to hold the foundation. So like I say, you know, as designers looking at problems, it's not productive to try to decide, well, does that person really need that or do they just want it? Don't do that. You know, that basically just shuts off your creative energy. You know, just, do people really need to dance? You know, we, had, we were looking at the dancing thing. You know, ask someone who's dancing. God, this is what I was. This is what I always wanted to do. So now, there's a couple of things that aren't on here. One is independence, right? So I put independence. How many times did we hear it last time? What I, you know, the thing I'm looking for is independence. Someone that's dealing with some kind of assistive technology. You know, you got to have somebody else to push the elevator button. Got to have somebody else to plug it in. You know. But if we are what some people call like an able-bodied person, we sort of take for granted that we can do all those things. But there's always, you know, there's a certain point where we're, we're going to have try to have somebody else do something. So the drive for independence, see, I think is up there in the pyramid, but it's still there. And then I think something else is just is still there. It's kind of up here in the green zone. Coolness, right? We want to be cool. We want to have stuff that's cool. Why not? You know, why should we say, no, do you really need to be cool or do you just want to be cool? Don't even think like that. Just think about how could we make this more cool? So, any question about, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. I'm saying designers, but I'm an engineer. Am I eliminated from your discussion? No, no, because you're doing design. Everybody here is a designer, right? And this is a, I mean. Can they be an engineer too? You can be an engineer. Yeah, what is it? anyone is it's working to solve a problem, right? So, so Dave, you put that label, see, then that sort of blocks. Are you this or that? So don't even think about that, right? That's what I'm going to say. Um, so it turns out, okay, I just learned this today. This guy, Abraham Maslow, I was looking up his bio on uh, 
Wikipedia, and it told the story about, you know, all, all these places that he went to school, went to Columbia and all that, and he learned all these things and what he did. Then it says, death. He died at age 62 in 1970 while, of a heart attack while jogging in Menlo Park. And uh, it turns out that, yeah, he, uh, that actually he had a connection with Bob McKim and Joe Arnold, uh, the people that John Arnold that, that started the design program. So there is actually a direct connection between this thing and what we have, what we've had in the design program here and now also in the D school, uh, uh, the whole kind of body of, of knowledge and thinking around need finding, it has a direct connection to uh, this guy that originated the idea. So the definitions for us that are important is, so I put down need finding as we think about it, is identify a person's unsatisfied wishes, requirements, or aspirations related to a particular task or goal. So notice I don't even say need there. So just, we want to identify kind of basically what's missing. What they, what they can't do, what they want to do, but it's all focused around a goal. So, that, so that's the big thing, trying to understand the goal. And the thing that's re on the other side, sort of like the complementary thing, that's why we got the, the yin-yang, is that the sort of idea of the capability is something, the resources or tools are the things we do, the things that we use to reach our goal, right? We want to get the food in our mouth, we got a fork, right? If we don't have a fork, we can't have a, manage a fork, then we want to do, do it some other way. We've got to find another way to do it. Now, the, the thing that's important here is the other side of it is that it's not just about the gadget. You know, we want to understand, okay, what is the context? The person wants the food. Well, it's mealtime. There's food on the table. Somebody is making the food. There, there's other tools that are there. You know, we want to understand what else is going on when the person need, wants to put food in their mouth. And so both, what are the tools that are doing it, and then what are the obstacles and, limit, and uh, limitations? And something I didn't mention specifically, who are the other people, right? So counter to what Dave said. Just a different perspective. The, yes, <laughs> a different point of view. We're designing things for people, right? So it's not about, you know, the struts on the bridge. We're trying to get the struts on the bridge to meet a certain spec. No, we're, we're designing things for people. The people are, you know, the person is in a wheelchair. The person needs to dance. You know, so, so my, basically my slice in the, in the curriculum is we gotta think about the people and who, you know, try to understand not only the person that you think needs the thing, but who are the people around them that are helping them or blocking them or actually not even the people, it's also the dog, <laughs> right? Or there may be a service animal, you know, sort of like, who are the other things that are kind of in, in the problem situation? And then lastly, you know, like try to under, our, what we call assistive technology, but other things that essentially help people, enable people to reach their goals. So three things to know about needs. First of all, again, repeating it, things don't have needs, people do. So that's the first thing. We're, we're, so I'm gonna talk about ways to understand what the, what's going on with the people. What are their needs related to the, who are the people in the, in the space, in the problem space, and what are their needs around it? There may be a person helping the person who is in the wheelchair or whatever, but they, and they have different needs. You know, they have different motivation, different goal. So we, we want to understand that too. Second is sort of try to define, it helps to define the need in experienced terms. So like, you say, I need a fork. That person needs a fork so they can put food in their mouth. Well, turn that around, what's the experience? The person wants to get the food in the mouth. The person wants to feed themselves. So if you focus on the, you know, some existing solution out there, you kind of lose track of other, other ways that you might approach it. Think about the experience of the other people in there. 
And then the third thing is what happens when the need is satisfied? What is the, you know, when the person gets, is able to feed themselves, you know, how does that change? What, what, what do they do next? What, uh, what options does it open up? What other requirements does it have? What do they have to do? And what are the key, key people are involved? So we're not trying to solve all those problems, but it's very helpful if we don't understand all these other things that are going around. I mean, the simplest thing, okay, I, you know, I, I fed myself and now I want to brush my teeth. How does that happen, right? So maybe that's part of the whole solution. Okay, all right, here's, everybody, I see there's a piece of paper. Is it, is it blank in the back or is there something on the yeah. back? Blank in the back, okay. Let's use this. So this exercise, this is a little three minute exercise. Think about how you got here to class today. What was your last class? You think about, well, I, I was in this other class, I got on my bike, I found a place to park it, I had to lock it, I walk up here, I grabbed, you know, what did you do? So make a short list of the things that you did to get here today, okay? Then this is just three minutes, but just so we have something to talk about. But also, what's in your life? Because for many people, their list is gonna be a lot different than yours. Put it that way. Okay, that's probably enough for us to talk. Does anybody, who would like to share their list with the rest of the class? Anybody want to be a volunteer? <coughs> or do I have to pick somebody that seems to have something? All right. How in depth do you want it? What's that? How in depth. Oh. <laughs> Did, no, yeah, just go through briefly because we, we'll ask some questions about it, okay? Absolutely. So I left work early, drove through heavy rain, waited in a long line at my son's school to fulfill a desire for him, which was to have rainy day pickup. It's a big deal for a little kid. Uh, stopped by home, grabbed devices to occupy son while he's here, drove to Stanford to pick up my friend from an appointment, um, had to stop the car in a specific spot and help guide her to the car because um, her dog doesn't know where the car is. <laughs> and then we came here and we had trouble finding visitor parking, but my son pointed out a spot moved a small barrier park and navigated our way here. He found the way, okay. He found the way. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay, so great, thank you. So here, you know, if we were then, so if, if I were basically interviewing you or talking with you, then I would s sort of go back and start asking some of these questions. What were the, what were the important things, the most important things? You know, that you had to pick up your son, that you had to pick up your friend. You had to accommodate her dog. And um, there was, there's sort of like, why was it important that it was done that way? And so this is, well, you want it to be, you know, you know, you want it to be smooth and effortless rather than awkward and, diff you know, challenging, right? For example. And so these are the kind of questions, if someone is telling you their story, that you want to kind of find out. What, you know, well, I wanted to be cool when I picked up my son, right? I wanted to be at the front of the list, front of the queue, right? And then we want to find out what tools or enablers you use. I mean, you, well, obviously, you had a car, we're riding on a bike. How many people here came here on bike from class? Yeah, so we got, 
How many people came here on a on a van? Did you, yeah, did you come with your on your own van or? Okay, so some people had other transportation, and uh, the last one, what are, what were the blocks that you managed, right? How, things that you ran into, like you say, it was rainy, and you know those things, but you managed them. So. Every, you know, so when you start talking to any individual person, you know, these, this little profile of things will be different. It'll be kind of unique for that. And so this is kind of the idea of not, you know, I came to class and picked up my son. Says, well, there's a whole, you know, sort of the next layer, there's all these different people involved, there's different situations, different resources involved. And we could even go further than if you say, well, my real thing is I want to be a good mom. This is my top level goal and my son wants to be <laughs> cool and do the, you know, he wants to have esteem in his class, right? So, you know, it doesn't hurt to then say, all right, given these you know, we, we sort of take care of, of these things, but there are these higher level needs that are also in the picture that we want to, you know, if we're going to, if we want to provide her with an effective solution to coming to class, you know, we need to take into account that there's all these other things that are important to her. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just making up a story here, okay. <laughs> okay. So, when it comes down to, you know, we're working, you guys are working on your project. Uh, you know, so I'm saying there's four, four things to know about need and context. So it's like I'm saying, again, it's about the person, what's going on with the person who's using the device, but also the context in which it's being used. So first of all, try to understand what are the goals? What are their goals? You know, she had... Would you share your name with me, please? Greta. Greta, okay. So Greta had goals to pick up the sun, but also, there are also other goals there, like, you know, get him on time and then to pick up her friend. And, you know, so there are several goals involved there. But try to understand that. Or we had, or Donna was saying, you know, main goal, get my, get my chair charged, right? So, Fernanda, sorry. Uh, get my chair charged. And uh, the, from the dance point of view, you know, think about, try to understand what are they, what does the person trying to do? What are they trying to get? What are they trying to accomplish? And, you know, the whole idea of the pyramid is that, well, some of the things are up there on the high part of the pyramid to, that I, they're doing it for self-esteem or for to be all they can be. Well, don't dismiss those because, well, yeah, but I'm only, I only want, you know, stuff that involves serious hardware to protect, protect you from, you know, give you safety and everything. It's like, that's the whole picture. We're looking at the whole person. Then the, the second thing is why. That's kind of what I, it's sort of like, what are the attributes about the way the goal is accomplished? You know, do you want to be cool? Does it have to be efficient? Does it have to be, you know, like smooth? Does it elegant solution? You know, there are sort of these attributes about the solution that may, you may not kind of call them goals, think about them as goals, but they're part of the picture. That if you, if you don't make it cool and somebody else has got a cool thing, they're not going to use your thing. They're going to want to go to the other thing. So, so, that's, so, so I put the, the question there is to sort of think about what else is important about how the goal is achieved. And then on the other side is what do we got that helps a person achieve those goals. So you're looking at what are the resources that are there, but then at this point in the beginning for the, from the need finding point of view, it's really about understanding you know, what, what, what's going on with the person and what's going on around them. What are, what are the things, you know, if they're in a community where there are other people, it easily makes it easy for them to kind of reach their goals and it's not a big deal. It's different from a person that's just living on their own and having to deal with all kinds of stuff independently. And the last thing, of course, is obstacles, limits, limitations, deficits. You know, what are the blocks? 
that are making it difficult to have to be managed. So how do we do that? So this is where I say there are a number of resources which there will be a slide at the end uh, of PowerPoints, you know, tip sheets, PDFs, and like that about interviewing and need finding that basically come out of the D school and about the HCI design class and like that, which I would really encourage you to, you know, down, at least one person on the team, download them and look through them and try to understand it because they're really great and it's too much to try to do today. But at the very least, we have this, so I'm just focusing on three techniques. Interview, observation, and prototyping. So interviewing, you talk to people. And you talk to not only the person who is going to be the user of the device, but also the people around them, the other people in their life. Trying to understand what's it like working with this, how do you help them, you know, when we're traveling and the, and the dog has to be taken care of. And the last thing, of course, as the designers, and we're here, we you know, prototyping, which really means make something and see what they do with it. Instead of just arm waving, what about if we had a thing that could do this and it was like that? You know, we used to, we used to do that. This used to be the way things were done, but here, and largely at the, you know, Stanford was one of the pioneering schools that really was focused on prototyping, project-based learning, and you know, let's build stuff and see what happens. Both we learn and we, we, we learn, well, gee, you really can't put three prongs on that thing and make it, you know, float in space. But also, you know, you make something even out of cardboard and you can, you know, put that in front of the user or in the user's hands and let them see, yeah, this would be great, but when I want to do this, it won't fit. I mean, I love the, you know, remember the Tony's video He's sitting in his chair, and he's got this little piece of cardboard. But it was very effective about, so he was looking for a, a tray. And so the, the piece of cardboard was very effective, just kind of showing that here's, you know, this is kind of like something about this big that has to go do this and do that and do that. He didn't try to mock up a tray. He's sort of giving you an idea about the kind of thing he's looking for. So, you know, if you can do that for, with your target users or your project presenters, then um, everybody learns something, right? Both you learn something when you get the reaction from them, but they also learn and say, oh, yeah, I thought it was going to have to be like this, but now I realize it could, do, it could do this. So then what? Of course, well, then we don't think, you know, we still do critical thinking, challenge the facts, assumptions, inferences, and of course we're doing design thinking, which Dave, uh, which is one of the models that Dave was pointing to, but the main thing is, you know, we, see to me, when I'm saying understanding the problem, I'm talking about understanding the person's problem. The person is there, then there's the context of the person. And then the other thing is, they, oh yeah, then there's all these technologies and other solutions around there that are part of it. So in the design thinking model, they, you know, they call that empathy. So we're getting empathy for the person and the, and the situation. Then we brainstorm, ideate, sketch, prototype, and iterate. So that's the important thing, and actually that's why Dave's got you on the schedule of doing lots, you know, keep doing stuff, because it's not about, you know, doing six weeks of analysis and then Start trying to crash something together at the end of the quarter, right? And Dave, it's easier. See, if I were doing this, I'd say every week you have to bring in something, even if it's just a pencil sketch. Oh, well, we have to report the progress. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, tips in interviewing. Avoid leading question. Okay. So we don't ask what. You know, what does it take to, what size should the connector be to plug in your wheelchair? Why, maybe there's not a connector, right? Don't, don't sort of ask, ask them out a question that sort of presupposes what the answers can be. You know, you may ask, you know, 
what are the circumstances that you might want to to be able to give your chair a charge, right? Well, when I come home at night, I want to be able to just just put it someplace and it just charges. You know, kind of then you can start thinking about. It. You may come back. It may come back to well, does this plug the right size? But you want to kind of. Uh, have it, have it as wide open. Second one is ask them to show as well as tell. In fact, we, so we saw that actually, again, with a lot of these things, Tony and his thing, you know, he could have just done a little arm waving about, I want a tray that can fit this. But, you know, he was able to show. So ask them to show you something. Well, what happens when you're trying to do that? Can you show us? And what else is going on when, when you're doing it? So one thing, so as I say, we get information directly from the person rather than for us sitting back or re even reading their description and trying to imagine, oh, this is what they want, this is what they're trying to do. I mean, that should be the first thing. You pick the thing, you got the thing. Don't, don't try to come up with solutions right away. First of all, well, what, did you, what do you mean when you said, you know, you wanted to, well, what was, you know, here's one. I mean, Abby was, Abby was great, but I don't want to pick on her, but here, okay. Explorer designs has to be large enough to hold a tray of food, okay? That's, well, how big a trays are you, are you using? How heavy, what are they holding? Are they holding really heavy stuff or is it light stuff? You know, you, you want to, there's sort of like one of the first principles, right, for design designers, even engineering designers, Challenge the problem as stated, right? You want to sort of question, well, somebody has given this, has put this in a little box of a problem statement. Well, let's step back and see what else, you know, what is it a tray? Maybe it's not a tray of food. What if they're just talking about a bowl, a bowl of cereal and a bottle of milk or a, a water bottle? So these are the kind of questions when you, when you actually start talking to someone, you might find out. The second basic technique is observing. I mean, it may seem obvious, but you, you know, you need to, you're, it's not like you're spying on people. You're not, you're going to spy on this woman who's trying to board a bus. You know, she's, you're with her and says, okay, well, come on, let's, I want to go with you and, you know, let's see how you can get around the city, right? And so you watch when I do that because there will be some things that she does in getting on and off a bus that she sort of takes for granted because she's been doing it, but she realizes, oh, she doesn't use that handrail, she uses that handrail. And, and that may affect whether you're putting something on the chair, for example, right? Or she's got the dog, where does the dog go if she gets on the bus? What kind of seat do they, do they go into? See, a lot of things, if they're just talking to you about what they're doing, you know, they, again, if they've solved, they have a working solution. You know, they sort of take for granted that it should go like this. Just observe. You don't need to challenge them or scold them or, that's stupid, why are you doing that? You know, that's not what you're there for, right? You, you realize, you may ask them, why do you take the, this side, that rail versus that rail? Okay, so we have time for a little exercise, kind of like building on what we just did, which is form little groups at your table and given the same thing about how you got here today, but maybe one person volunteers to be the subject. And I guess I would like to encourage that if you want to focus on one of our community members that's here and ask them there to tell their story, then that would be very useful. So, um, and this will be like a 15 minute, 10, 15 minutes exercise to do this, okay? So break up in, you, could, you know, groups of three or four, I would say, and try it, and do it just kind of the way we, the way you did it personally. I mean, everybody's got something for start. Are you, you game? game? You're game, okay. Everybody else game to be, are you game to be interviewed? Sure. Okay, <laughs> all right. Even Mateo can be interviewed. <laughs> yeah, how we got here today. All right, so give it a try. When we're done, I will ask one or two teams to uh, tell their story, okay? Okay. <laughs>
I, uh, sorry, I just... No, that's fine. No, it's good. Everybody's brain is different. Yeah, no, that's, that's important, right? That, to say, oh yeah, but I don't think like that, right? Well, then you, 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 you got, they're covered with you. Yeah. I got, I covered the other people, yeah. so they okay. can. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, just join. Yeah. No, this this is good because oh, you're going to take a picture. Okay. No, I, I like leaving that up because then they can be reminded yeah. about what they're. Thanks for step by step. What's happening with you guys? No, nobody volunteered to talk. No, I was talking. Okay, right. you're talking. All right, good. Thanks. Uh, you have to be really, really careful. Okay. Mind if I sit? No. Yeah. So, you know when you're making the first prototype, it's not going to work, but you're going to learn something. So, it's very liberating to, to have, know that you're going to be making a prototype and know that this isn't going to work. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So the opposite would be, okay, I'm, I'm building something from the start to the finish, and it's got to right. got to work at the finish line, and just incrementally. I know it's going to take a number of weeks, and so I'm going to do you know the first part of it, the first 25 percent of it, and the first 25 percent of the time, and, and so on. But so that's just one way. So, okay, I'll get since you raise the time, I'll give you. My two topics on that. One is think about think about doing a prototype, not so much to think, okay, is this going to solve the problem, right? Which is kind of what you're saying. But it's sort of like do a prototype to, to basically maximize the things you can learn. Like you're just prototyping to learn. You know this is not going to solve it, but you could, is this kind of a pastor going to work with that? You know, or whatever whatever it is, right? There's some tricky problems. Well, you know, the other concept that Larry uses a lot is uh, critical function. So sometimes you say, you say, you know, this thing is gonna, it's gonna be a box. I don't have to worry about making a box. The box right. Be, but there's one element of the box, of the the, the the device that I don't know how how to make it. I know I, I haven't done it before, and so this can be critical to get that part working because that's the core of the product. So I'm gonna focus my 
attention on, on that. So, um, So I will. So I think at a quarter till I'll try and. Yes, yeah, Is that right? Five minutes. And then there's a couple more. Okay, let's. So here's what is in the deck. So if, if we want to, do we want to talk about this at all? It's up to you. But I have. And all, then. All, this, all the stuff is online for Yeah. Posture. And, uh, but I wanted to just sh show these just to sort of like. Okay. Uh, tease them and inspire them that yeah this stuff is I mean I know this stuff is in here but this at least will make you think oh I'd like to see what yep. dig in right and uh, okay that's good okay Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But even when we built the can finish there, but we'll... So Eric, I guess I'd like to ha ask a couple of questions about your experience as the interviewees or the listeners. Actually, I, I think this, little, this uh, configuration with one person per table being the interviewee yeah. kind of makes sense. Um, so first I ask a question. If somebody would like to volunteer, what was... What was some surprising thing that came up once you started talking to, to the person. Anyone want to volunteer? Some surprising thing that you learned. Yes. I worked with Gary, maybe, but I'm surprised to learn at how blind the rest of the world is when they're looking at their cell phones. And then uh -huh. bumping into her or not aware that she is walking through his face. Yeah, yeah. I, I happened to overhear a part of that and that struck me. How many people, uh, was somebody else went up? Did you have some interesting, some, uh, some unexpected thing that came up that you heard? Yes. For example, there, I had a uh, on her way here, she wanted to stop for coffee. Uh, but at the, at the end, like she, she didn't manage to have enough time. So uh, she had to, she mentioned this like, like trade, like the trade off she does with her time. Uh, if she can she either gets here on time, or she uh, takes her umbrella with rain, <laughs> and at the same time, like, I don't know, use the choice. So you can always be afraid of these uh, processes. Yeah. How many, how many, it sort of reminds both of these things, sort of brought to mind that, I mean, tell me if you, if you found the same thing. There, there's, there was a lot more complexity in the situation than I imagined, right? I mean, we're talking to the persons, you know, that the, you know, oh yeah, there's people on their cell phones around you. Those are other people, those are the contexts, and they're not your friends. They don't even, you know, they're, you're, they're oblivious to who you are, and they're just lost in that world. But it's a complex situation, or here, you know, how do you, you have to do that kind of a trade-off that probably the rest of us don't have. So it's, so that's another thing. Actually, a good question to ask is, you know, a lot of things aren't a matter of can they do it or not. It's sort of like, what are the trade-offs? What are the trade-offs that you have to manage on a daily basis? Because, you know, everybody, you know, like we say, everybody has, you know, high-level goals and they want to realize those. But, you know, we each kind of make different trade-offs in a different way. Somebody else want to share an experience, something you heard, please? Anyone here? Well, um, actually, it's exactly uh, emphasizing what we were just talking about. Um, 
the fact that even after you walk all the way to the general section of campus which has a building, you then need to figure out which building is the right building and then which entrance is the right entrance. Uh -huh. It's so complicated here and that just adds walking time and struggle time and stress and frustration. sometimes you, frustration and sometimes you ask people and you know they don't really know or they tell you the wrong place so that's even more walking and even more frustration. <laughs> so. Actually, so there's, there's also so there's a key word in your interviewing, frustration. I was also hearing it on the, on the table, on the other table. The frustration, you know, when, when people's talking about, or see, so you can even, what are the frustrations that you run into? Because again, you know, it's not so loaded, you know, it's not maybe such a, a loaded word as what kind of blocks did you, what were things were you, were you not able to accomplish? You know, don't, people don't like to admit that I was blocked. I couldn't accomplish that, that thing. But if you talk about what kind of frustrations, what kind of trade-offs did you have to make, that's a way of sort of eliciting those things. And uh, then they can kind of tell it in their terms. So um, we're just out of time here. I just want to show a couple of more slides here, just relate. So one thing, Dave has mentioned this, that what, what goes on in, in your projects is there's sort of a dynamic of, you know, what we're, do, what we're talking about here is l learning, you know, what's needed it, from the point of view of the user, their capabilities, their requirements, the re their resources. Then, you know, there's the other side is that you're working in a team. Your team members, you know, they have needs, they have constraints, they have requirements, and to, you know, to work the team together, you know, you need to kind of creatively manage those trade-offs too. You know, some people can't, you know, people have different schedules, and they, have, but also they have different skills and different background, and, and you know, a, a good team will have a good complementary thing. And uh, the last thing is Dave what? and the course. Oh. There's all these resources that are available, the shop and, you know, Mateo and uh, other people are available here, and, and also even other people, other guest lecturers may be available to talk to you about stuff. So those are kind of part of the research. So, that, so all this thing kind of goes together to uh, help you come to a good conclusion. And this thing, I'm not intending that you read it. This is just a little tease that if you go on the, P, you know, download the PDF, this will actually give you, so this is kind of a thing from the D school about, you know, how to do observations, what, what tips to look for, you know, techniques to try, and then also there's uh, several different links to other resources. And I strongly recommend at least one person on the team, you know, download some of these things, and because they will give more specific tips and, and resources and assistance for in doing interview and, and observation and things we tried. Okay. Well, we want to thank uh, Gail for his presentation today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please drive and see everybody out of the